So studying Hagia Sophia and San Vitale, you have learned that Byzantine art has a distinctive and powerful style, Byzantine architecture as well. And in terms of the figurative style, you saw that very clearly in the San Vitale mosaics, which distill some of the essential elements of Byzantine tradition as a specific artistic style. So here you see the elongated figures, a hallmark of the Byzantine style. These figures that are elongated and yet so thin and flat like paper dolls, they seem to float because they are such a mixture of stylization and naturalism. And then of course, what's so important is the gold background that shimmers and reflects actual light off its surface. So in Byzantine mosaics and paintings, we will see, you don't just have represented light as you do here, you have actual light, you have reflections as if the holiness that is represented by the gold is coming towards you from the surface of the artwork. And in fact, if you look carefully, figures in Byzantine art often feel as if they are projecting toward you rather than receding back in space. So here, Jesus on this orb representing the cosmos, he's a ruler of the cosmos in his purple robes, purple being the color of imperial status, he seems as if he is actually moving toward you, almost as if this were some kind of spaceship. And he's moving toward you from this gold field of holiness. So I want you to think about these stylistic elements as we now move to another aspect of Byzantine art, which is mosaics. Wait, I just said mosaics. I meant icons. Here we have a special section devoted to a special kind of image. A really important part of the Byzantine artistic tradition are these kinds of images that are known as icons. And related to that is an event that is known as the iconoclastic controversy. So let's start with what icons are. The word icon is the word icon, I-C-O-N, derives from the Greek word for image. It simply means image, but these images are not simply images. They're much more than that, I'm saying here. Speaking about their physical facts, they are usually small and usually portable, painted on wood. The mosaics that you saw on San Vitali are durable and affixed to the wall, so they are not portable. Icons tend to be portable images of holy figures. And the reason that they are more than an image is because they are understood to actually emanate the divine toward you, as if the divine presence is shimmering out of the wood panel and meeting you as the viewer. They are felt to be a kind of direct link to the divine, not merely a picture of a concept. And so one of the things I put on this is an image considered to bring the divine present into this world. And your textbook shows this particular icon, Theotokos, the mother of God and child, of course, Jesus, with saints and angels. Encaustic is a kind of wax-based paint on wood. And this is from the monastery of St. Catherine that we were just talking about. In fact, icons were felt to bear the spiritual power of the figure represented so potently that worshipers would pray to them, kiss them, bow before them. Icons were said to have miraculous healing powers. The sick would get well when they touched them. When, some, when someone's well, water well dried up, the icon was lowered on a rope down into the well to restore the water miraculously. These were the intercessors between the human Christians worshiping 
in the Byzantine culture and the divine beings that they contacted through these images. The stylistic traits of the icons fortified that divine quality. Notice that the figures and icons are almost always frontal or mostly frontal to maximize, maximize the sense that the viewer is confronting the divine presence. The eyes are oversized with a penetrating gaze, a kind of a deep regard out because the worshiper understood the figure in the image to be returning the gaze, to be looking back in a kind of communion. Byzantine icons tend to be highly stylized. Look here, the nose is incredibly long and as thin as a pencil. The hands are also elongated. They're graceful, but they don't look that functional. Mouths are tiny. And little baby Jesus has his neck and head so torqued and, and tipped severely that, I, that the form of it, the shape of it on top of his swaddling clothes makes him look like a caterpillar coming out of a cocoon. It makes you wonder if he needs to go to the spine surgeon. We tend to think of images differently than the Byzantine people did. We prize naturalism, especially when naturalism seems to exactly match the appearances of the real world. After all, we are most familiar with photos, which do that in, with mechanical perfection. Icons don't care about that. In fact, that would be going against their purpose. Icons are painted to maximize and ensure spiritual authenticity. Icons were made by strictly trained icon painters. And icons were powerful and miraculous because they were understood to be meticulously faithful copies of an original. There was, it was said that there was an original portrait of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus that had been painted by Saint Luke directly in the presence of those holy figures. And all the holy icons can, that came after were supposed to be based on that original primary most sacred image. And so they were supposed to copy it exactly. So icon, train, icon painters were trained to copy and to express faithful following of the copy as an act of religious faith. This meant that they could preserve and prolong the spiritual power from earlier icons into a new icon. Now we live in a world and a culture where the belief system is that the future will get progressively better because of technological development. That's not how the people of the Byzantine Empire saw the world. They saw the past as better. It was purer because that was when Jesus was present on the earth and things were slowly degenerating in their view. They wanted to keep their icons connected to that original powerful icon that contained the direct presence.